Welcome back to World Energy. We're here at the NAEP 2008 Expo doing on-camera dialogues with senior executives from the industry. And today, join me is Larry Knowlton from BESA Resources. Larry, thank you very much. And my pleasure. Ordinarily, I would begin with NAEP, but for those of you that don't know, tell me about the name BESA. Well, it, uh, it's highly technical. It means buy and sell anything. And uh, I think it's a quintessential uh, capitalist story of uh, oil business. It, uh, we have a very simple company, started two guys that didn't know anything about the oil business, and today we are the 35th largest private producer in America. 35th? Yep, yep. And that's quite a story. <laughs> you know, one of the things that we were talking about earlier uh, was how you got the, sto the story going. And your company buys uh, production, is that correct? Yep, yep. Why, uh, our, our theory used to be why drill a well if you could buy one. So we uh, simply started out uh, buying other people's trash. Most of the majors we've dealt with every major in the United States and uh, hopefully turned it into our treasure. Well, one of the challenges I think today is that $90 oil, is, are acquisitions becoming more difficult to find? I think acquisitions are always difficult to find. I don't think anybody's giving away money. And right now oil is money. I think we recognize it's a lot more money. But uh, finding, rooting out a, a good opportunity, there's always uh, uh, either something that's underloved or has some hair on it or taint on it or some problem, whether it's environmental or whether it's under uh, underutilized or, or it's underexploited. And we buy things in negotiations, usually private negotiations, and then we put our people on it and usually love it into much better existence. <laughs> well, you mentioned you started the company with your partner. Yep. How many years ago? In 1989, we founded it together, and uh, I'd been a funeral director for uh, nine years, and he just uh, got out from an investing company and not too long out of college, and we met each other. Had absolutely nothing. The only thing I knew about oil was the funeral business was kind of rectangle holes, and that was planting, and oil was round, and, and, and always heard that was reaping, so I knew, knew only dimensionally what it was about. Well, and the industry itself has grown dramatically, but are you focused regionally or...? or we, we always had a rule, it was about three hours, we didn't drive away from the house. So we just stayed in Dallas, and I, um, I know there's a, a lot of opportunities internationally and a lot of opportunities offshore, but, well, you can fly over a lot of oil between Dallas and Houston. Mm -hmm. So we like Texas. Uh, we have a little bit of activity in Louisiana, some in Oklahoma, but home is Texas. That's where you find for us as scavengers the best opportunities plus find the best people. One of the things that I think is interesting is how much your company has grown. How many employees do you have now? We have 113 employees and uh, we have a great staff, an engineering staff, but uh, our, our real strength are our people in the field. Um, all the people that uh, work for us I think uh, know what, knows what it means to ride for the brand and um, I don't have to worry when I go to sleep at night. I have people that know more about our wells and know more about the babysitting and what's going on than I do. And uh, I think I have the best people in all America. So I guess the energy industry has been good for you. Yeah, it's uh, the quintessential capital story. It's a, a, a great uh, part of what makes America great. It's really the, the purest free enterprise opportunity for poor boys make good. It, it, to some degree, if you study the story of Exxon, you study the story of Standard Oil, it is the story of America. And uh, it is the power that runs free enterprise. Mm -hmm. Well, our economy was born on low-cost energy. And I think we're entering an era where that's going to be much more difficult to do. Yep. But as a domestic producer, that's really your job, is to make sure that we have enough low-priced energy. If we look at where we're going from here, what would you say to somebody who was considering a career in energy today? It is the best industry. There's nothing like it. And the opportunities, who's going to inherit all of the, the properties, all of the uh, technology? There, there's not enough young people in our industry. We had a, a, a big attrition during 98. Uh, a lot of uh, women said to their husbands that are engineers, go be a, throw newspapers, do something respectable because we don't need to go up and down the roller coaster financially. I think the world's changed now and it's a great opportunity for young people to be in our industry. I don't think we're going to have any less 
need for it. Making babies seems to be too much fun, so there's going to be plenty of people uh, in the future that are all going to want to drive cars. I don't see any the soccer moms slowing down in their Suburbans. They seem to go 70 mile an hour out on the uh, freeway, so I, I can, can't see anything but a great opportunity for young people in this business. We talk about the prices going up and demand going up. Yep. Do you think the American consumer really understands how important domestic production is as compared to taking Nigerian oil? I think that's a that's a difficult question. I would never. I think people are smarter than they ever have been before. That uh, most of the time, I don't think we want to debate over where it comes from. We just need it. We want it. And the question is, what do we have to do to get it, and at what price? There's a lot of oil here in America, and I think conserv conservation has to be an issue we all have to look at. But then there's also the side of looking at our existing oil. I believe we have over 450,000 wells in America, and most of those are less than six barrel a day wells. So uh, I, I think it's very important for us to look at the reserves we have and how to maintain them. Uh, it, it, it also looks like in the near future, the consumption's sure gonna uh, outrun our ability to produce. And, and I think not only legislation-wise, but we need to be a little more friendly towards our industry. I don't think our industry's always had the, the best image, and some of it rightfully so. I think there is an overall image that guys in this business are cigar smoking in the back room and just trying to manipulate the price. I think that you know, it would be interesting if the world knew what people in this business do every day. Yeah. You were mentioning your hunting trips. Yeah. yeah. I don't think the outdoors is something we want to destroy. No, no, no. I, I, I think the, uh, the, the normal person that is in the oil business has a conservation mind. Uh, I think they want to live in a friendly, happy, good, healthy world. Uh, they, most of them that I know are family men. They have children and uh, they look to have a, a, a future for their grandkids. And what we do now and how we conserve and to a large degree uh, what legislation we enact will affect what our grandkids what kind of a kind of world that we're going to issue them still in the near future oil is king and we have to be a good steward of our asset well one of the figures that i like to point out is today we produce less than 30 percent of our domestic needs by 2012 we're estimated to produce less than 10 percent of our domestic needs you found an unusual source for oil. Yep, yep. We produce, uh, well, I think I said we were the 35th largest private producer in America. Uh, maybe we're 16th largest of all producers in Texas, uh, but we're also the largest producer of salt water, which we don't get any awards necessarily for that. And uh, we don't have a market for it, so it's uh, cycled and we get about one to one and a half percent of oil skimmed out of all this salt water that we shove back in the ground. How much oil does that represent? For us, we produce um, approximately 12, equivalent of gas and oil, about 12,000 barrels a day. And so we move perhaps uh, 900,000 barrels. In the East Texas field, our East Texas Saltwater Company, uh, I know we're about uh, 900 uh, uh, barrels a day. It's close to just in that one field, which was the largest field for years. Larry, any final thoughts? Uh, I think the oil business is a, a great business. I think Nape's a, a great place for young people to come. I still think it's a great country and yeehaw for Texas. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm Richard Loomis for World Energy Television and we've been visiting with Larry Knowlton of BASA Resources or Buy and Sell Anything. Thank you very much for watching and we'll be right back.